Hello, my name is Todd, and welcome to a, another Demergo Studio. Let's see if we can get the right screen. Uh, hello, my name is Todd, and welcome to another Demergo Studios live stream. Um, thank you for joining me, and uh, today I'm working a little bit more handicap. I am uh, only have my laptop screen with me, so it's a little bit harder to manage um, Twitch and all of that, along with um, uh, viewing and chat and all that stuff. But I'm going to try my best. I got my phone up with the chat on in case anyone jumps in and wants to chat. Um, other than that, uh, let's get started on some of what we're going to be doing today. As uh, the stream title uh, mentions, um, we're going to be talking uh, a little bit more about gray boxing out our Mossboro town. Um, the town here, uh, so yeah, last time we, uh, last time we built out, let's see if we can get a bigger picture of this, we kind of boxed out the town. So we, we laid out a map first, and then we went around and we boxed out the different areas that are going to represent one screen of our town. Um, and then we also... Um, created like the different screens within buildings and stuff like that too and that's just it's it's a start um, this time what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through uh, we're gonna start by labeling all of the little squares so that way we know what square goes with what and then we're actually gonna start digging into some of the details of the squares um, by kind of laying out um, just roughly laying out the different objects in them we're not gonna be doing this in unity again we're gonna stick with um, Affinity Designer for this part, uh, just because it's easier for squares and stuff like that. But um, eventually, we are going to move this into Unity sometime, hopefully, in this gray boxing stream. But we'll see. There's um, definitely some more systems and stuff that need to be built that I'll be live streaming as well here um, in the near future. But for now, we're just going to get started with the numbering of these boxes first and then move on to kind of digging into the gray boxing of each. Close this. Um, we'll start off with <laughs> Affinity Designer. We'll open up our recent layout, uh, which we have here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to number these. So, number the different pieces. Uh, for that, we're going to do some text. Um, we should do one. Then we're going to make it a really crazy color so it stands out. Um, Oh yeah, that's a good color. And it's blue, let's see, maybe we can do a fill in the background. I'm not sure. You know what, let's do this. Let's do... So this is actually going to be up top. I'm going to do layer number. Put text in it. We're going to get a circle. We're going to put a circle here. We're going to make it a fill of yellow with the lines. Put one there. Oh no. That's not what we want. There we go. Something like that. Oh, there's some ugly colors together. Let's see if we can put this. Alright. What we can do is we can do a, a black background with a white number. That might work. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, and then we're going to take 
Put this whole thing and shrink it down a little bit. And there we go, we've got our numbering. We'll create a new layer called uh, numbers. And then we'll just go on from here. So this could be number one, um, primarily because this is kind of the first area you start. If this will be number two. I didn't think that would work, but you never know. This could be a little bit more tedious than I want. That's okay, let's adjust this a little tiny bit. There we go. Seems to fit a little better. Let's see if we can align this. Yeah, that's not set enough to be annoying. Oh, you know why? I don't know why. I was trying to figure out why my snapping wasn't working because I turned it off. Yeah. There we go, perfect. That's all I wanted. Alright. There's our two. Delete. Well, I can delete this. That way, at least we're consistent. Help if I just locked it. Um, Lock the inside so that I don't move, but I don't want to lock the outside because I want to move the outside around. I'm going to move this to here. Um, and then we'll do another duplicate. Turn so locking off. Or something.
All right. Number eight. Come on. Yes, it's a nice tedious job. That's a win. No. You know what? Let's do this. This will help a bit. Yeah. A little less distraction. Please excuse the dogs or soccer. I don't normally have dogs, but I'm uh, dog sitting, as it were. I really wish I could just select. It's kind of annoying. I could just select the thing below on um, my cursor. I'm not sure why it isn't doing it. Probably because I need to. No, the other layers are locked. Well, I don't want any of that stuff. 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out right now how to... It's really quite annoying, I feel like that is... It's... Maybe it's because I have locked the layers? Yeah, it must be because of that. The funny thing is the dogs haven't barked all day. Until I start live streaming. Isn't that how it usually works? I might have to go. Hold on. The issue they're barking is the, the school buses are dropping the kids off across the street. So, they're barking at the kids. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe they have stopped working now. Yeah. We'll see. You know what, let's try this. Let's see if this is up. Let's... So just did that, okay. Let's see. Like that. That's kind of what I wanted. I kind of like that better. I already did all these, but we're going to just go ahead and delete them all and start over. Not what I want, but uh, this could be a little bit faster. Number these so I've got some areas out here if we go uh, back at the screen I wanted some areas out here I haven't exactly decided what areas I want out there but um, we're gonna go ahead and put them there anyways um, I'm doing the numbering but we're gonna stop the numbering for a second 
So I can finish off these areas. So these areas here are going to be like puzzle areas um, where you find more gophers and such. And maybe the idea is, so I was thinking of this um, the other day, or just actually last night. Um, so in our last, one of our previous gameplay discussions, um, I talked about using the gophers that follow you around as like your inventory system. I thought, well, why can't I take that one step further? Have different types of gophers that follow you around that can carry different types of inventory items and kind of have different abilities. It's almost a little bit like Angry Birds with the different types of birds. Well, these would be different types of gophers. So maybe there's like a extra big, like a big muscular gopher that you can collect that can carry large inventory items, and the rest of them can just carry small items or something like that. You know, maybe when we get into some more specific worlds like ice worlds and and fire worlds and mountain worlds and stuff like that, we'll have different special gophers with a. Uh, you know, go for followers with abilities or something that can carry special objects. But so that's what I'm thinking is these areas here um, would be where you can go pick up those gophers. Not just like special gophers, but any gophers in general. And since the point of the game is to collect all the gophers, you know, to bring them to your uh, grandpa's celebration. Um, so we've got these different areas here and here and then a big area here. And then we've got some areas here that I actually did outline. But those would be areas where we collect gophers too. And then you got an area over here with gophers in here. And then potentially an area, I guess, down here too, but potentially an area up here. And up here off the mill. But something like that. So, but I am going to section these areas off right now because I think, uh, because I better before I get too far ahead. Um, again, these are just initial attempts. Um, let's uh, unlock you. It's going to select you and duplicate you. Here, down here. So for this I'm thinking a couple different sections. Um, okay, that was weird. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to try it one more time. Okay. Um, something like this. And then something like this, maybe, is what I'm thinking. Um, the connection will be up here. And do that. Uh, we're going to leave that for right now because I want to come over here and do this section. Alright, we're going to come here. Go back to the elongated section. I mean, it can it can be whatever size we want. You know, I this one could be broken up into two screens too, maybe, and you know, two separate screens. Who knows? You know, I'm, these aren't definitive, they're just um, ideas. Even in there, so it's connected. Let's see, control V. Shrink it. This one could be an elongated, so maybe this is going to be a couple elongated sections or something like that. There's another one, and then I had some sections over here I need to grab, so I'll just grab this square, duplicate it, drag it down here, duplicate it, drag it down here. Um, I think this one I'm going to do one more down here. And again, these areas, like the sizing of the areas isn't so important because they're they're going to be one iPhone screen size. So, um, and, and in fact, we might make these break these up into a bunch of smaller areas because I may want more to work with. So 
I think we've got them all. Let's finish up with connections then. Um, let's go ahead and lock that. Let's go back to connections, unlock. Let's do some connections. This will be an easy one. Oh, I guess um, for connections I was just using that pencil tool. Um, let's see if it's all set up for what I want. Clean, thick stroke. Yeah. I want a little thicker. I think I did two. Yeah, two is what I was doing. Connection there. Connection will be up there. I have no idea. We'll definitely have a connection here. We'll make the connection down here. I maybe you can't get into this area until you unlock these passageways or something like that. You know, or we could do like a connection here and that's the exit. So this is almost like a little bit of like a, a Zelda temple where um, you know you go here and here and then you finally get into here and then it's a quick exit out. I don't know, something like that. Maybe we could go something like that. Um, there we go. We've got those all connected up, and uh, just a little cleanup work from last time. That's done. We can go ahead and lock our connections again. Move back up to our numbering. Lock our sections. Lock our connections. Go back to our numbering, and continue on with what I was doing before. Well, and now let's go back and hide. Uh, well, you can just make it very, very transparent. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Go back over here. Make sure we're on that. Mm -hmm. Here we Seems to be happening again. There are always extra ones. One of these days I'll figure out why. Um, a thing in designer likes to duplicate when I tell it not to. should be a 30 second process is taking a whole lot longer. Mm. We're getting close on time, but I want to finish up this numbering because this is ridiculous.
Uh, well, I think it's just me. When I hit Control C, it assumes I want it. I paste it. Venom design is great, it's just got to work out these silly little bugs, like extra duplication all over the place. Uh, how many are there? Oh. That is possible, I'm just maybe using it wrong. I, I admit to that, I'm not... Uh, I'm going to say I'm almost foolproof. They've got this new command J. What I've found is it's trying to be a little too smart, I think, sometimes. Numbering is getting there. No, that's cool. I'm getting there. All right, so I figured out the shortcut. It's Shift Command to do a duplicate on the move. This is how it should have been in the first place. This is Ooh, I forgot that part. We'll put one here in anticipation of there being another one. Gonna have to get going. Well, this is not what I expected to spend the whole stream on, but such is game dev. It happens. You know, I didn't even get the numbers counted, I just placed them. Got some boxes figured out too, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Let's, before we end this 
stream. Let's get this last section done that I missed down here. Lock up that layer, get back to the numbers. Let's do a little bit, maybe a little bit of number. Let's do a couple, maybe. Let's go to text. Oh, interesting. Right. Well, this is going to be interesting to figure out how I want to do this. This is part of game dev, is learning all of these skills and talents, or all these things, you know, learning all these little traits and becoming better at them. And one of them is better at your Affinity Designer software, which, you know, I unfortunately I find myself using too little these days, and so I'm getting really rusty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to laugh. But... It seems like when I click one, it's tweaking the globals. There we go. That seems to be done what I wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. Actually, just to be free. Nope. Again, global stuff. So one, two, three, I guess you would be four. We got two in here. Thanks. Works to me like this too, right? All right, well. I'm going to save it. We're going to end it here because I have to keep going. But um, when we come back, hopefully I'll have all these numbered and fixed, or at least I've figured out a more efficient way to do this because this is really annoying. Um, 
So, uh, sorry for the little bit of a boring stream this time, but uh, that's what game dev is like sometimes. It's boring. Um, thanks for stopping by, and um, we will pick this up uh, next time. Thanks.